Welcome back viewers to another episode of ETCG Dad's Truck. And I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what's going to happen in this video, but I will cut together something that I hope will be interesting and engaging. But I have a whole lot of work to do in a very short period of time. So I'll just give you a general overview of what I'm after. I want to go through this engine compartment. I want to go through the wiring harness and strip out all the old engine management system stuff because it's no longer necessary. But I do want to keep things like windshield wipers and possibly even cruise control. I don't know if I could make that work or not, but if I can, hey, what the heck. Things need to get cleaned up. Some things maybe need to get painted. Uh, you know, there's a lot to do just in here. But then I need to move inside the truck, remove the seat, remove part of the dash, the shifter, and all that stuff. So there's a lot to get done while the engine is away at the machine shop. And I want to prepare myself so that when that comes back, all I've got to do is rebuild it and throw it in. It's really easy to say that, but we'll see what I got. Anyway, long way to go, short time to get there. I'm going to get started in this engine compartment. First thing that catches my eye in this engine compartment is this battery tray, which could use some help. It can be removed, which I'm going to do. I'm going to clean it up and uh, prep it for paint and possibly even paint it. I don't know if that's going to happen today, but it will be painted before it goes back in. There's also this uh, air intake here and there's something up here that are no longer going to be used. And basically my thought is I'm just going to start on this side and then work my way back in towards the firewall and back around to the other side. Sort of like a, a U from here to there, from here to there, from there to here, from here to there. And this thing is really in my way, so I'm just gonna get rid of it now. And the rest of these I wanna access from inside the fender. Now I'll remove the overflow. And I was concerned, because I thought those were loose, but they're the same on both sides. That might just be the way this is. And then when it's bolted to the hood, it's solid in place. It's just in a slot. A little tab on the back side of that. Whoops. Coolant everywhere all the time when I do this stuff. There's another part of that air intake system I'm just going to take out. Although, that may not be possible. Looks like that, the outer fender would need to come off. Because I kind of want to mount a computer here. Or here. I don't want to get rid of this and the battery's right there. This is a good spot to mount stuff. Here's the other end of it. Yeah, they ain't never coming out. Not while I'm taking the fender off. Just have to see where stuff goes, but I could just cut this down. Here's the thought and the debate. I don't really have time to paint this whole engine compartment. I'm going to continue on with painting the frame like I did below. I think that's a good call, but as far as painting these and getting everything, I'm I don't think I have the time for it, so I think I'm going to clean all this up. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, there's a bunch of stuff to do, and I just keep thinking that, and I'm not really moving forward, and moving forward is what I need to do. So maybe what I need to focus on is uh, this wiring, since it's quite important. And I've, I've got the wiring diagram as well. I know this goes to the back of the alternator. Anyway, I need to go back through this. Oh, there's something that's broken. And figure out what goes to engine management, what goes to stuff that I'm keeping, and then decide if I'm gonna replace uh, the stuff that I'm keeping. You know, this stuff's so old and brittle, it's just literally coming apart. And that's fine, because I intend to replace it. There's a junction block or a fuse box or something like that under here. Yeah, that is very helpful. That's a power distribution block. And that is handy to have and handy to know about because this can be distribution for all kinds of stuff. I'm going to be replacing this dryer anyway. So probably not a bad idea to get this out of here. It'll give me better access to stuff. 32 millimeter, in case you were wondering. It's just the ground cable. That can sit somewhere for a moment. Gotta find a place for truck parts. Heater hose. Uh, 
if only this would work on the new setup that would be kind of cool not likely this transmission one's going to get reused at all now i'm trying to figure out what wires i need what wires i don't You know something that doesn't need to be there? Clutch master cylinder. Ah, a bunch of fuel coming out. I'm like, I smell gas. No, I know why. At least the gasoline evaporates. That's gross. I feel like we got in a start out here. Yay. But there's so much more to be done inside. I think it's time to take the seat out, take the steering wheel off, and start tearing dash stuff out. All right, seats are 15 millimeter thingamajiggies here. And maybe that's all I need to do. I don't think there's electrical stuff. It's hard to say. You can do it. You got this, brah. Your battery's freaking out. So I will stick it on the charger. You got no juice, man. You can do it. I would love to do this interior right, like sort of what I did with a Fairmont. Do the matting and everything on the inside. One day, one day. Seatbelt's gotta go through these holes. Kinda gotta go through one at a time. Wow. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe instead of trying to do this, I'll just undo the seatbelts from the inside. There's a lot of stuff under here. I just put those boards under there and hold it up. Oh. Cool. Nice first aid kit. Thanks, Dad. All right. Now my seat should come out. I'm wondering if I should just disconnect this seat belt so when I do take it out, it's not gonna smack into this, at least on this side. Experience has taught me that taking seats in and out of vehicles tends to screw up the sill plates. So I'm gonna remove it. Looks like there's a wire there that I'm probably gonna be removing anyway. <laughs> Looks like a DIN cord. Probably going to a CD changer.
I've added light, which is awesome. But I found working in here, these things are so in the way. Yeah, I didn't think so. Could get the half inch. I just worry, I, I don't like inverted fasteners like this. They always make me nervous stripping them out, especially something like a seatbelt. This is a specialized bolt. I don't want to strip it. So I'm going to wait until it's moving. It's almost out. I'm happy. And then I'll zap it. Oh, and I found out the CD changer is not going to be difficult to remove. Ooh. A key. We'll get the rest of you later. Something tells me this might be easier to do with it drop down. This is an aftermarket add-on. That could be the radio. So if that goes to radio stuff, I can get rid of it. There's also another connection under the hood that I'm going to need to undo. I'll look out there just to make sure that I'm not doing something horribly wrong. It's so much easier working here without this engine in the way. And then when I pull it free, it's actually free. All that effort to try to not break stuff, and I break one little tab. At least it's only a little tab. I mean, dealing with three old stuff kind of goes this way. I'd rather take my time to try to get something apart than to break it. Are you just that stubborn? Yeah, it's helpful. Thanks, Light. You're really great. Ah, oh, finally. I think that's everything. Bag it, tag it, all of it. Takes time now, but it'll save you time when you go to put it back together. You won't spend an hour trying to figure out where that fastener is. Huh. Old tags. Stuff that is no longer needed. Keep the cigarette lighter though. Never been used. Let's keep that in there for now. Because this is what I'm trying to figure out. How I want to do this. No, oh, this guy's attached to the floor. Ah, I got something for that. I'm just sort of working from the outside in, but with the seat and the steering wheel out of here, everything is opened up. Shifter's next. I'm going to recondition this anyway. Oh, this would be nice to have out so I can verify that I'm getting the correct parts. in there. Wires that never really got used. I'm definitely going to need a new boot. But this can be illuminated. But it wasn't illuminated. Oh, that little cable's attached down there. So if I unhook you screws, 
and get that little cable off and get that boot off of there. That part's undone. All right, I have a better view of some fasteners and some wires that aren't even really connected to anything. I bet these bolts are gonna suck to remove because they aren't attached on the other side. Oh, I get it. <laughs> this, I bet somebody hooked up for reverse lights and they did it off of here. That's why I think these wires are up in here. Now I get it. Cause this, this is a connector that goes into the vehicle. I wager that connector is this one right here. I wager that connector was uh, to the reverse lights. You know what though? I don't have to disconnect the brackets going through the floor. I just need these brackets here. So we'll leave the ones in the floor so they don't fall down in there. And here's the nut that I dropped. Could you be a 10 millimeter? If you were, you would be awesome. Whoa, you're a 10 millimeter. Now I just need a wrench. Oh, you are not 10 millimeter on this side. You lied. So you're 11. Almost looks like this height is adjustable. Well, not almost. Looks like this height is adjustable. Therefore, before I completely remove it, I want to mark it so I can just drop it back into place. There's a very, that little plastic piece holds on the shift indicator cable. I'd say that's important. So I wanna get this in a bag ASAP and lock down tight. thing to do is just to get disconnect the cable right here if it's awesome it's the same 11 millimeter awesome enough I'm getting more of it let's figure out how this is wired later you know what though I'm kind of regretting leaving these stabby things sticking up out of the floor but you know, you know, question was just asked, um, why did I take all this apart? Well, I'm going to be making my own cluster for my new gauges. Now this is the mock-up that I use for the Ford, but it's the same size gauges that I'll be using. This will be air fuel. The one down here won't be boost. It'll be transmission temp. Uh, but these are, I'm getting the same style gauges. It's not the same color, but they'll be living like this. And I wanted to check the sizing and it's awesome. So I've got plenty of room for all that. I need to get this whole center section out and I'm also replacing the radio also and the speakers and the dash. So there's a, there's a few things to come out. Maybe I'll start with this middle piece. That is just a couple of torques, which I thought I had already grabbed. give me the opportunity to label stuff or not because like it's pretty obvious where this stuff goes this is obviously the fog light switch and these are obviously to the headlight switch and dimmer and I can finally get rid of those little pieces that have been in this vent since I got this thing. Mm. 
9 30 seconds is what the size of these are and it looks like the majority of the stuff on the dash is 9 30 seconds That is a very old peppermint. The whole point of this is to follow the... Oh! Oh! I love their radio wiring right into the accessory socket. Okay, the fuse box is right over there. There's open spade connectors. Oh, plenty. This is just going to get fixed now. strip these wires there's some kind of module up in there I think I'm just gonna retape it but oh, better tape I suppose if you're gonna tie into something the accessory sockets the way to go though I think there's a better way and I will show you my way Eventually, someday, when I get this truck to work again. Feel better about that. What next? Going for the radio? Yes, I am going for the radio. Never to be seen in this truck again. Got these little quarter inch fasteners that are just barely in there. Right next to these other fasteners. I don't think the radio comes out on its own. I think it's like, no, no. I come with climate control. What's cool is the display is all green and I believe I could change the color on my new radio but I believe one of the colors is green so I can make it match what's happening in here all right so you got to come out first because there's a hidden screw because they're like nobody's gonna steal this radio from you sir or ma'am looks like it has a connector elsewhere thank you Chevrolet I really appreciate you making this Challenging to read. Take a look. Next to the sharp, spiky thing sticking out next to my head. Love it. Well, it feels like you used to have a lock. You don't anymore. It's okay. I can't see what I'm doing either. But I'm trying to unplug the climate control. It would have been great if they put a connector on the back of the radio. You know. To me, that would have made sense. But I don't know nothing. Less than nothing. You would think it'd be getting easier. It's not. So I'm going to take out the center section on account of I feel like less of a man because I'm not able to do something than if I can do something. And removing screws is doing something. Almost looks like they have a couple of other ones. Fake screws. This vent made in Canada. Nice. Canada! Ah. So this is also strangely held in place. Oh. Maybe not. Oh! Oh! That's actually smart. Well done. So there's just a connector in the back there and you just pull it forward and it comes off that there connector. I can deal with that. So this is going to be my template. And ooh, the plastic comes off. It's not all glued together. This is back old school. Ooh, look at that color. I like that. That's sweet. But sadly, this is all going away. <laughs> I just need to make something that will bolt into here that I can paint black, that I can put my gauges in, and then all my wires will come through here, I think because that's already there, that hole. Nice, 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 nice. It's 
sweet. Cool. The board is just flopping around in there. April 20, 1990. That's when this HVAC was born. <laughs> it is a uh, high value HVAC. No joke. I think I found the thing connecting the radio. Radio disconnects underneath. At least part of it does. And the rest goes that way. Oh, this I'm assuming connects to this. So how do you come out? I love that dad left me a mixtape, a thing to plug into the tape player, and a spark plug. One single spark plug. Ooh, excuse me. That's my air letting out right now. It happens. This is all stuff for radio. Given that I have precious little space and a new radio that doesn't use any of this stuff, I'm going with that. If you hadn't noticed, I'm trying to take apart as little as possible because of time. I suppose I could do this whole dash and I may very well end up doing it. Ah. I see where you're going. I think it was rather kind of Chevrolet to give us this little tray to, you know, maybe have lunch on. I don't know. It's, it's nice. Screwdriver, 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 screwdriver. I didn't put it back over on the bench, did I? No. It's right here. It's like right here. It's right in front of your face, Eric. You're losing stuff in front of your face. Oh. Now that is old school. That's got some weight to it. A Schrader? Is it actually a, an actual Schrader? Wow, this is like real deal tire pressure gauge right here. Awesome. Keeping that. Oh, wait. Ooh, don't do that. Don't scratch my truck. There it is. That makes it better. Uh, pull out the center first and then that's how you do it. So now things should come out easily. That looks like my PCM. Bunch of relays up there. Some harness stuff here. Everything associated with this. Hmm. I don't know about this cup holder. And I say this because dad has one for the door. And that seems to work pretty good. And this one interferes with the shifter. It comes off. It's ready to come off. Cleans up the dash a whole lot though. <laughs> Score. I've been pondering this for a little bit and how I can get to this and deal with it. Well, I just found out because the more of this I take apart, the more I realize I'd have to take a lot more out. And I keep going back to the amount of time I have in order to get this work done. I still have to build an engine, which I want to take my time with. I'm going to work towards that end and try and only do the bare minimum here. Like taking out this radio, no problem. Prepping for my gauges, great. Figuring out what to do with the ECU and its wiring, well, I guess that's a work in progress. Ah, there's the other radio connection. 
but this guy. Okay. I see. There's like an amplifier or something right there underneath. This guy. It seems to contain all the stuff. Yay, tape player, intact. Yay, radio, intact. If these things decide to go on eBay or something like that, I got gotcha. you. So what are you doing over here, Eric? That's an excellent question because I thought, you know, despite the fact that these vents are here, because I just made a big old hole, um, this might be a good place to, I, I get these magnets and I mount things like my phone and stuff to them this might be a good place for those magnets, but more importantly, where I want to uh, put the engine management tablet. So I might be able to just magnet the tablet to that area and just put like a black, a black out something in here. I, also, I thought about gauges, but I got gauges covered over there. Those are the plans. Now let's find out where the rest of this goes. Get rid of it. Ah, that's what's making you stay. Okay, so you, I think, are the radio antenna. Antenna. And you, I bet, are... No, you're not that. Ah! Somebody grounded you right there. Boop, there's your ground. Oh, last call. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. All right, all right, I'll get to you in a minute. Oh, just stop yelling at me. thinking I know I probably shouldn't do that I've been trying to mull over <clears throat> what I'm gonna do exactly with this wiring harness thing I think what I'm gonna do this is the computer right here the PCM I'm just gonna unplug it here because it's it's not even gonna be a part of the equation anymore uh, I'm the engine management system has its own computer it controls ignition it controls fuel injection and it controls the fuel pump which I'm gonna run through a fuel pump relay all that's going to be external away from this which is why i thought well i'll just pull these wires out well looking at this dash and the way it's in here there's a lot of stuff that i'm going to have to remove in order to remove this dash and how much benefit am i going to get from that compared to the amount of time that i need in order to finish what i'm doing comparing that i think unplugging the ecu and uh what i do outside in the engine compartment is just remove the wires that go to the engine and cut those out and then I can cap off the ends of those wires even though they'll be unplugged here they'll be dead I can cap off the ends of those wires with shrink tube I've done stuff like this before and hide them inside the harness so I'll get new conduit for out there and wrap it all up you'll never even know <clears throat> and all you'll see is what I want you to see I want to save time I don't I don't want to waste time trying to chase down stuff that maybe I could do later or not at all Sweet! I figured it out. The only thing I'm concerned about is the ones on the inner part, because there's like this outer edge trim, and then there's this inner part too. like all kinds of room.
There's only gonna be a couple of wires that I'm gonna need out of this. I just need access. There. Now, I can consult my wiring diagram, find out what goes to what, because I'll need ignition power, which I can probably get from here. There's a fuse box right there. I'm going to need uh, the illumination circuit, so when I turn on the headlights, it illuminates the gauges. Uh, it's, I've got my own dimmer circuit, so I'm not worried about that. And then uh, turn signals, I'll need those indicators, figure out which wires go to those, and the high beam indicator. So I'll need all of that coming out of here to go to the gauges that I will be installing. Well, viewers, that's going to be a wrap on this episode of ETCG Dad's Truck. Now, there was one thing that I wish I would have covered a little more in detail in the video, and that's the removal of the PCM. Uh, you don't need any tools or anything. There's just these clips here. So basically, you can just unclip it, just pull it out, unplug it, and away you go. And this is the older style that you can actually go in and replace the, uh, the prom chip in. Anyway, uh, I posted a video yesterday about the future of the posting of these videos. As you can see, the truck is already complete. It's already back together it went on the power tour with my dad I've got footage of my dad driving it for the first time and and his his opinions of it and all that kind of stuff that I want to present to you now as far as the edits of, of what you just saw the rough cut of this ended up being about seven hours and I just took out uh, probably about two hours of that seven to condense down into this video so specifically what I was getting at was I mean do we want to get into the detail and the minutia of how I put all this stuff together or maybe just cover things like uh, the custom gauge cluster that I made and the um, the radio installation things like that and then skip to the engine videos that might have been a better way to say it in that video yesterday I know you want to see as much detail as possible but my point being is that uh, instead of dragging it out for a long time like the Fairmont videos, which aren't even completed yet, I kind of wanted to get to the conclusion on this one a little quicker, and I thought that might be a way to do it. Anyway, I hope that puts a finer point on it. Comment down below on how you feel about proceeding forward. Anyway, uh, there will be more videos on ETCG Dad's truck. As you can see, it's, it's all together and wonderful now. So I, I have that footage. I just need to work through the edits, which, you know, that takes time. Anyway, if you have automotive questions, I ask that you head to airatthecarguy.com that will be linked down in the description along with additional videos the ones that preceded this the ones that are coming after this all that kind of stuff is down in the description tools that i used all that kind of stuff link down below so check there uh, please don't forget to like comment subscribe i really appreciate when you do that stuff be safe have fun stay dirty thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time